It's not just emergency teams in hospitals that are ready to help you. I know! There are medical crews all over the country on standby 24-7. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. This is a state-of-the-art rapid response vehicle. It can get to the scene of a medical emergency in minutes. And I'm heading out in it to show you what it's like to be a life-saving paramedic. Jan can take 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. We've had a 999 call to see a 32-year-old man who's got a rash and swelling in his mouth. Now, that sounds to me like an allergic reaction. So I've got my camera in the front, Eric has got his camera, and we're going to be getting you as close to the action as possible. Only a couple of minutes later, and we arrive at our destination. Hello, is it Alan? Yeah. Take a seat, my name's Jan. What's the problem today? I thought I had like a rash or something. Uh, yeah, tongue was swelling, my throat feels a bit. Tight, have your mouth wide as you can. Uh -uh. Fantastic. So your tongue feels big in your mouth, does it? Yeah, my ear feels quite tight. Okay. I'm a bit short of breath, but. Alan is experiencing something called anaphylactic shock, an extreme allergic reaction. Tigger and Sasha look concerned. So, is there anything that you're aware of that you're allergic to? No, no, Nothing no. that you know of. Although Alan's being pretty brave, he has a life-threatening condition. His lips and tongue can swell, and that can cause problems with breathing and swallowing. So it's actually really important that Jan's here. What I'll do is I'm going to give you an injection into your arm in a second okay. <clears throat> with a drug called adrenaline. Now, you may have heard of adrenaline. It's actually a hormone that your body makes. What it's doing, in Alan's case, is constricting the blood vessels in his tongue, in his lips, and will actually reduce that swelling. In cases like this, it can be life-saving. I'm sending um, Alan in the hospital today just so that I can make sure his tongue doesn't swell again. So the drugs I've given only work for a short time. How are you feeling, Alan? Do you feel like it's working? Yeah, I do feel a little, a little swelling is going down. Yeah. An ambulance has arrived to take Alan into hospital. You be right walking out, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. It's potentially a life-threatening problem that he had, and Jan's really fixed him up. You could see how much the swelling in his lips had gone down, and that happens all the way down his throat and into his lungs. So that's really, really good news, and they'll be able to treat him really well in hospital. with the sling? I broke my elbow. How did you do that? I was running on a wall in Spain. Are you in trouble for that? No. Don't run on walls in Spain. Anyway, why don't you show us how you crack your knuckles, OK? That was a lovely crunchy noise. And what's happening is that inside each of the joints of your hand, Sirac, there is a special liquid called synovial fluid. And I'll tell you what, do you both want to see what's happening inside your hands? No, no way! Look, I'm not going to actually cut your hands open. I'm just going to show you using the syringe. See you! Now, the water in this syringe represents the synovial fluid in Sirac's joints. And when he cracks them, what he's actually doing is temporarily reducing the pressure. And I can simulate that in the syringe. It's sealed at the end and no gas can get in. So if I pull it and reduce the pressure, it bubbles form. And that's because there's gas dissolved in the fluid. When you reduce the pressure, it comes out of solution, a bit like when you open the lid on a fizzy drink. And if you pull the plunger back and then release it suddenly, you get a pop when the bubbles collapse. That's called cavitation. And we think that's what's causing the noise in Sirac's joints when he pops them. Well, Sirac, you have been a brilliant knuckle cracker today, so thank you very much. Go on, off you go, back to the cupboard. Fine, I have things to do anyway. All right, fine. Bye! Bye! So synovial fluid might be great for making a popping sound, and it probably doesn't do the joints of your hand any harm, but it can be extremely annoying, so don't do it if someone asks you to stop, unless you want to annoy someone. But the real purpose of synovial fluid is to lubricate and protect all the moving joints in your body. And in fact, it can handle a huge amount of force, so much force that we are unable to demonstrate it inside the laboratory. We are going to have to take it outside. Come on, Zara. 
down chop chop. Now when you do something as simple as running for a bus, your knees have to absorb a force equivalent to eight times your own body weight. Now that might sound like a lot, but of course the synovial fluid in the knee absorbs the force, spreads it evenly and protects the joint. Come on Zant. I'm coming. I can't wait to see what you're going to show me. My absolute favourite thing about synovial, but wait a minute Chris, is that a crate? Yes. Is it a weight attached to it? Yes. Wait, you don't mean... Yes. You're not going to... Yes. Wow! Now, your synovial fluid is amazing at dispersing huge amounts of force. It's like a cushion that softens the impact on joints, like your knees. And that's lucky, because when a gymnast lands... I thought I saw a gymnast back there. Yes, this is youth Olympic champion Aisha Mattis, who said she'd show us a few moves to help with our experiment. So when Taisha lands, up to 12 times her own body weight goes through her knees. And we're going to show you what that kind of force looks like by dropping a weight onto this car. Now, the weight and the distance of the car have been specially calculated to exactly represent the force that goes through Taisha's knees. But unlike Taisha, this car has no synovial fluid. Are you ready, Zan? I was born ready! This is all in the name of science. Scientific synovial fluid experiment, go! Three, two, one, drop! <laughs> Look at this! It's completely caved in the metal roof of the car. And that is the kind of force that your knees are protected from by the synovial fluid. But I tell you what, I'd be very interested to know the kind of forces involved if a gymnast was built, you know, more like me. Well, that's easy to do, Zan. We just need to raise the weight higher to see the greater force that would go through the knees of someone heavier. You ready? Ready. Three, Three two, two, one, drop! <laughs> If you look at this broken glass, that is what the cartilage in your knees would look like if you didn't have synovial fluid and you did gymnastics. So we've shown you that knuckle cracking makes a popping noise because bubbles from your synovial fluid burst as you flex your fingers. And we've shown you that the synovial fluid has a much more important job than fun popping sounds. It helps your joints withstand the huge amounts of force you put on them every day. Well, I must say, Chris, that was absolutely excellent. And that car is completely ruined. Now, how about I give us a lift back to the lab? Chris? Chris? <laughs>